My name is Jeff Ziegler, and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, historic preservation in the context of uh, economic development. And I spend a lot of my time driving around the state, uh, working with cities and towns that are working to revitalize their, their urban districts, their downtowns. And the state's uh, had a tough time over the last few decades with the loss of manufacturing, the migration out of downtowns, out of urban cores, uh, the migration south and west, and the more recent economic decline. But there's some real bright spots in the state, too. Places like Worcester and Lakewood that have decided that their community is going to do things differently, that it's up to them to dictate the future of their own town, that they get to decide the trajectory of where they live, and that it's not up to national retailers to tell them who they're going to be and what the shape of their community is. It's up to them. Places like Nelsonville and Lebanon, who have decided that they're not going to spend their resources anymore trying to attract more manufacturing back to their community. Not that there's anything wrong with manufacturing, I'm saying, but they're going to do something different. They've got something different in these communities. They're going to focus on the resources that they have there, the people, the culture, their quality of life, their, their character, their built environment, their natural environment, their arts, their crafts, their skills. They already have those things. They don't need to pull those in from outside. And you know these towns. They're the great places to visit. They're the places that you love to go, and we all do. These are the places where you might take a weekend trip and uh, you know, get out of the city to do something different. You might actually stay in a, a bed and breakfast for a change instead of the Howard Johnson. And, and I find myself in these cities all the time through my job, and, and I always am walking around the downtowns in the residential neighborhoods and I always end up finding myself thinking, you know, I bet you the people that live here are, are happy. Um, you know, I, I can't speak to the, the, the level of happiness of the people that live there, but, but that makes me want to cry. I mean, that's, that's a scary looking place to me. And there's a lot of these towns in Ohio. We're very fortunate. There's the places like uh, Oberlin and Vermilion that have decided to focus on something that, that, that's so critical for all of us, that, that's so important to all communities that that if they all focused on it, we'd have very healthy, sustainable communities with vibrant economies. They've decided to focus on creating a sense of place. They've decided not to sell their soul for a front page newspaper touting 100 new jobs. That's real, actually. Some church built that behind a Walmart. <laughs> Just makes me all tingly and sounds so special. Um, you know, they're not going to sell their soul for, for a front page newspaper or for a small jump in the, uh, bump in the tax base. They're going to go for something bigger, something better. They've decided to preserve their buildings instead of building new, instead of building more unnecessary parking, or instead of building these new disposable buildings on the edge of town. They're going to uh, preserve what they have. They're going to shop in the businesses that are already in their community in the face of million dollar ad campaigns touting family values and, and patriotism. They're going to spend their money in town where it really counts because there is a responsibility component to how you spend. Communities like the Gateway District and Warehouse District in Cleveland have decided that it's not good enough for them to accept scraps off the table of multinational corporations. They've got too much pride and they're going to do it themselves. So a sense of place. It's not an easy thing to put your finger on, but you know it when you see it because it's aesthetically appealing. You know, it's easy on the eye. And you know it when you feel it in a place because it's incredibly comforting to your soul. It makes sense. These places typically have two, three-story buildings, very pedestrian scale. Uh, cars move at the same pace as pedestrians. A full street wall, the urban wall, is continuous. There's a reason why you're in Manhattan and you walk 30 blocks and don't think a thing of it, because it compels you forward. And that's not something you get in every town. The streets are crowded, the businesses are full, and locally owned businesses typically. They're good places to spend your time. And we all like these places. This, this does not have a sense of place. There's nothing place about that. As somebody once said, there's no there there. And, and I mean, God help you to risk your life to try to cross that street. So these places, they, they have this sense of place. And, and we all feel that sense of place. We all like to be in those places. And, and that's why in those places, you feel a sense of community. 
That's why in those places you see your neighbors, you see your friends, you see coworkers, because we all like to gather there. And a sense of community is one of the most important things that we have in the world. It's a part of being something bigger than you. It's, it's part of that accountability back to your fellow man. It's, it's that inclusiveness that's so special that, that's put there by design. Uh, that's something I think we often overlook that, oh, a sense of community just happens. No, it doesn't. It's put there by design. You know, go to a cul-de-sac and, and you won't get that same sense of community as you will in a neighborhood with front porches and, and detached garages and sidewalks because you have to know one another there. And it's the same in downtown. It's the same in urban districts because you all use that space because it's a collective space. It's the community space. You feel that sense of community. It's so important to us. And those are all the characteristics of a place with a sense of community. They've got shade trees. They've got outdoor seating. They've got sidewalks, small businesses community events, those are the places where we feel a sense of community. Those are the places we need to protect and invest our money. The communities that I see that are doing it right, that get it, have decided it's not good enough to spend more money to incentivize businesses from out of state to come to our towns and take more money away. And then when it's all gone, they leave. Not good enough. These communities have decided that they need to do something different. They've decided to take these places that they have, these gems, these resources, and celebrate them. Make them the best that they possibly can be, because these ring true to the community. They're something special, and these are unique. You can't replicate this in every city. Recently, in a New York Times op-ed piece uh, titled The Experience Economy, David Brooks said, it could be that in an industrial economy, people develop a materialist mindset and believe that improving their income is the same thing as improving their quality of life. But in an influent, information-driven world, people embrace the post-materialist mindset they realize they can improve their quality of life without actually producing more wealth, which I think is fascinating. If you think about that, it means that a dollar earned doesn't any longer equate to a dollar more wealth. A, a recent study even showed that beyond $60,000 income, people don't derive any more happiness. So, so what that means is people are going to be making decisions based on quality of life instead of just particular jobs or high-paying jobs or income. They're going to make decisions based on what they want, a place that they want to live. Maybe it doesn't mean anymore to have a house in the suburbs. Maybe it's more important for somebody. Maybe they'll feel more wealth by having a loft downtown where they can get drunk and walk home from the bars instead of getting in a car, where they can walk to the coffee shop, or where they can be close to diversity and culture, where they can save, on average, $7,500 a year by not having a car. We've got to rethink our cities with this in mind that People are going to invest their money. They're going to choose where to live based on something entirely different than they had in the past. That's a huge shift. So we've got to change how we invest. We've got to think about our cities differently. We've got to start to look at the culture that we have in our cities. We've got to start to look at the places that, that make us feel like a, we have that sense of community. That sense of place is really what's going to drive cities. And there would be an easy way to, to make every job in a city worth more. It would be an easy way to improve the economy. I mean, think about it. If, if nothing else changed, but you made a city a, a bit of a better place to live, you know, if you focused on some of those quality of life, sense of place issues, you'd have a, a, a more competition for that particular job market. More people would want to live in that city. And if more people wanted to live in that city, you'd have more competition for those particular jobs. When you went to hire, you'd hire better people. That city would then become more productive, growing more prosperity. I mean, with that simple change, you'd have a more prosperous city. You could improve the economy by fixing sense of place first, not just adding jobs over here. And ask somebody that, that recruits surgeons for a hospital or that recruits exec executives for a corporation. When somebody comes into town, do you know what they want to see first? Downtown. Always downtown, because they know that that place, if it's a healthy downtown, that means it's a healthy community. They can make a productive living anywhere they want but they choose to live in a place that's worth living in. So what's this all mean? <clears throat> well, I think it means that we need to have a drastic shift in the way we invest and think of our cities. We've got to throw out economic development to where we continue to incentivize companies to come from outside and, and try to add jobs that, that don't sustain a living. They're low paying, no benefit jobs, and they don't even sustain a living. Those aren't the jobs we need. We need to make the places we live better places. We need to invest in, in the places that we live. We need to invest in preserving the buildings that are already built, utilizing the infrastructure that we've already invested in. We need to make our citizens wealthier by reducing their dependence on cars. We can make them healthier by increasing their ability to walk. We can make them 
proud by protecting their heritage and preserving the buildings that their ancestors built. And we can make them happy by fostering social interaction and a sense of community pride and a sense of community. We need to shift away from the old model of economic development and start investing in the places that we live and make them worth living in. Thank you.